All right. Hi, everyone. Uh, thank you so much for coming today and for joining me uh, for this webinar, which is teaching the church here in Sunday school. So I hope you are excited to be here. Um, we're going to give you just a little bit of information on um, how to teach this in your Sunday school, um, give you some ideas and some little tips and um, some resources and things like that. So again, really excited to have you here today. Um, hopefully everyone can hear me and see me. Um, if you cannot, please let me know. Um, just go ahead and type that in the question or the chat. And uh, looks like right now we are good though. And um, I will also get to all of the uh, questions. If you have any questions, I will do that at the end. So go ahead and type them in though as you um, <clears throat> think of them. And I will answer those at the end of the webinar. Um, if for some reason I don't get to yours, it's either because I'm running out of time or um, possibly that I want to get the right answer for you. I may not have that. And so I want to make sure I get the right information, but I have all your information, so I will be able to get back to you. So. Without further ado though, uh, my name is Stephanie DiDonato and I am a marketing specialist at Concordia Publishing House. And like I said, I'm really excited to talk to you today about teaching the church here in Sunday school. Um, I think sometimes people think it can be a scary topic or um, they think that the church here is just something so encompassing, um, you know, that it's just overwhelming actually to teach. But um, I just want to talk to you about that today and uh, take it into some bite sized pieces and give you some ideas on what you can do so that you can teach uh, this important topic uh, to your kids in your Sunday school. So let's go ahead and continue here. There we go. All right, so let me just give you a little overview again of what we're gonna be discussing today. So this is kind of everything that we're gonna be going over. First, I'm just gonna discuss a little bit on what the church area is. I'm sure you already know, but uh, just as kind of a refresher, just to kind of help us get our minds in the right place on what we're gonna be talking about today. Then I'm going to discuss just a little bit on why it is important to teach the church here. Again, um, I think sometimes um, Sunday schools might kind of overlook this, but I think it's actually really important to um, our faith and to teach these, teach that to our young students so that they can have a better understanding of Jesus. Um, and then we're going to go over the uh, main points and the bulk of this webinar today is going to be on ways or ideas on how to teach the church here in your Sunday school. Um, lots of different ideas that I have for you today and um, hopefully you'll be able to get a few things out of it today. And then um, I do have some resources um, for you that I'm going to talk about just a little brief overview. I also have a handout and I think Sorry, I'm just going to look over here. I think it should be somewhere on there for you. I'll be honest, I'm not 100% sure where, um, but I'll make sure I put that um, in an email that we will send out also. I'll, I'll put a link to that um, handout that I have for you that has some of the different resources on teaching the church here for you. So great. All right. Just want to make sure everyone's doing good. I think so. Well, let's go ahead and dive in though. So what is the church here? Great question. <laughs> so the church here, basically it tells the story of Jesus. It goes through the journey of his birth, life, death, resurrection, and ascension into heaven. Um, so basically this is our salvation story. That's why the church here is um, extremely important in our faith because it's going through the entire uh, story of Jesus and how he has uh, saved us. So what could be more important than that? Um, it goes along with the special days of the church year. Um, so the feast or the festivals. So things such as uh, Christmas, which is coming up soon. Um, you have, of course, all of Advent, um, Easter, Pentecost, so many different um, feast days and festivals. And if you follow the church year, this gives you a good um, overview of all of those days. And then there's three main sections um, of, the, of the church here, the time of Christmas, which again is what we're gonna be coming up on soon. And that's the beginning story of Jesus, his birth um, and that. Then we go into the time of Easter, which that is the time um, that tells us what Jesus did for us, that he died on the cross for us and ascended into heaven for us. 
Um, and then we also have the time of the church, which sometimes can be called the time after the season after Pentecost. Um, and the time of the church basically focuses on the life of the church um, as it's strengthened by God's word daily. So a really important part though. Um, there's also six seasons within all of those main sections of the church here, and that's gonna be Advent, Christmas, Epiphany, Lent, Easter, and then the season after Pentecost, also the time of the church. So why is it important though? Why is teaching the church here to our children something that's important? Well, there's a lot of different reasons actually, but I'm gonna go over some of the main ones. Number one, to remember God's great acts of salvation. When we go through the church here, again, like I said, we're remembering what God did to save us all, that God uh, gave us his son, Jesus, so that we can all have salvation. And by doing, by going through the church here every single year, we are getting to remember all of that, that, what God did for us and what Jesus did for us every day, which is absolutely amazing in my eyes. Um, it also can open students' hearts to the truth of the gospel. So sometimes when um, children are reading the gospel, it may seem just like a story to them, but by actually living it out daily and following this church year calendar, it can kind of bring those two things together, really showing them that the gospel is the story of Jesus and then bringing it into that church here so that we're living it every single day. So, um, and then something that I think is actually interesting is that it, it distinguishes holy days from non-secular holidays. So there are tons of non-secular holidays, Halloween. Sometimes I think people get confused that that might be some kind of Christian holiday. Um, Fourth of July, I mean, there's a ton of, non-secular holidays. And I think it's important that when we look at the church here, it's giving us those holy days, those special holidays that we need to keep um, in our hearts and in our minds, the ones that are going to be close to us and close to our heart. So those are some of the reasons, just a few. There's going to be a lot more though, but those are some, I think, the important reasons why it is important to teach the church here to our students. So what are some of the different ways? Again, I'm gonna go over a lot of different ways here. Um, I'm gonna kind of start off kind of in more traditional ways, and then I'm gonna go through and kind of dive in further and deeper into a few of those different ways for you. So let's do it. All right, so first one, traditional class. So what I would call a traditional class would be when you actually sit and teach one, the, the either one class for the entire class you teach about the church year, or three classes. Um, you could do that, you know, for the, each three um, times of the year. And you break those up and teach it as three different lessons. But again, a traditional class to me, what I envision is where you sit down and take that entire class to teach about the church year. Um, some ways that you could do this or some things that you could do is you could um, print copies off of the calendar. Um, what I like about this idea is that the students then have something tangible that they can look at and work with. Um, you could even have them trace or copy it. Uh, maybe it's something that you put up on your whiteboard and your students can actually kind of draw it themselves. Lots of different ways to do that, but um, I like the idea of actually giving the students some kind of handout that they can sit there and they could color in the different seasons. Um, they could label the different times, the different feasts and festivals while you are sitting there discussing that for them. So while you're discussing the different parts of the church here, you wanna go through it all and give why they're important to our faith. Why is each season or time of the year or feast or festival, why is it important to our faith? I think that's um, something maybe that sometimes we kind of forget that there's actually reasons for this. There's lots of reasons why it's important for our faith. And what makes each of them unique? So we know that the entire church here altogether is going to go over our salvation um, and what Jesus did for us. But um, knowing what makes each of those different times or seasons or feast unique, I think is really important. Um, something that I think could be fun if you're teaching um, older students or if you are um, an administrator and you have older students that you're thinking about as well. Something that I always think is great when you're teaching is to actually have 
the kids teach. Um, so what does this look like? Well, you can have them, um, you know, kind of group them up into different groups and have each group choose or um, select a different um, time of the church year or a season and have them research. Um, I think this is great because it gives the children some autonomy to um, you know, look and try to figure out things themselves. Of course, you would be there to um, help guide them as well and give them materials that they would need. But then after you know, a certain amount of time, then you would have the students come back and then they would teach each other. I think it's great because sometimes um, kids can maybe um, relate better and, and maybe put it into words that's gonna make sense more to their classmates. So, um, plus, like I said, it really gives them um, kind of this sense of that they did something and that they learned it themselves and that they can teach their other classmates. So I think it's a great way um, to teach the church here, especially if you're gonna do a class where you actually take that whole class period um, to teach this. Um, but the main thing, again, to focus on for this lesson or the three lessons is, the, the, is that it takes us through the events of Jesus' life and our salvation. Um, and then a couple of resources to use for doing a class like this would be um, Luther's Small Catechism. Of course, there's going to be all the information you need on there on everything for the church year. And then, of course, the, the course, the Lutheran Service Book as well. Um, fantastic. So that's kind of a traditional class and some ideas on um, ways that you could teach that. What about mini lessons? I think this is a super fun way um, to bring the church here into something that you're already doing in your class. So basically what you would do is you'd be doing short, quick lessons at the change of each season. Um, so this could be something that you do again before you kind of go into your regularly scheduled class that you have for the day. What's great about that is you don't necessarily have to um, disrupt everything that you are already you know, on track to teach, um, but it can just be something little that you do at the beginning of the class as the seasons are changing. So um, 10, 15 minutes, just something. Um, and then I just wanna say that some of these that I'm gonna discuss on here on the mini lessons, will actually go into further detail a little bit later on. So, um, but just do a brief overview of the season that you're going into. Um, again, what's nice about actually doing this when the seasons or when the times are changing is that it kind of gives the students this sense of it's the right here and the right now. So it kind of brings it into that everyday life for them. Um, a great way to, or something great to incorporate into these lessons would be devotions. Uh, there are tons of different devotions that are dedicated to the church here um, that are easy to find, and I have some resources for you as well. Bible readings, of course, are going to be a great way. Um, you can go over some of those different Bible verses and stories um, that can really help connect the um, mini lesson to that season or time of the year. Hymns and songs, again, um, I know especially for the younger students, uh, music is extremely popular. I love music. Um, it, it, I mean, think about any song that you sing on a daily basis or that you hear on a daily basis, you're gonna remember those words. So that's why I really like music. Um, and videos, videos are such a popular thing right now, especially for, um, I guess they're the Gen Zs now, which are probably all the students that we're teaching. And um, kids relate to videos. They can understand them. They're easy. Um, they're already done for you, which is nice. Um, and CPH actually has some videos and actually we're going to talk about that next. So, um, but mini lessons, again, what I really like about the mini lessons is that they're just quick, short little things, um, short lessons at the beginning of your Sunday school. Again, at the, you could do them at the change of each season, just to kind of get a brief overview of uh, what's going on in that time of the church. So let's talk about these videos. So um, here is this church year videos. Um, we have CPH has six short videos um, that go along with the seasons of the church year. Let's see if I can get it to work here. Here we go. And I kind of just wanted to give you, just show you a little bit of it here. If it's gonna work for me, let's see. Let's see. I may have to, I apologize for that. Should have made sure. Well, 
there may not be sound for you on this, so I apologize. Um, but I'll kind of just, oops, keep playing in here just for a second so you can kind of get an idea. Um, but these videos are absolutely wonderful. They are super short, um, so, they're be, so they'd be super easy to play within your classroom. And um, we have Advent, what is Epiphany, what is Lent, what is Holy Week, what is Easter, and what is Pentecost. Um, and again, just gives everyone a really quick, brief overview um, in these great little videos that I think would be super fun and easy to play in your class as well. And like I said, videos are so popular these days. YouTube is probably one of the number one um, rated sites, actually, in case you didn't know that. Um, so these are our wonderful YouTube videos that we offer. And I do have um, this as part of that resource so you can get all of the um, information there for you. I have the um, website address for you. So CPH uh, church year videos, again, just a great easy way to um, bring the church year into those mini lessons that you're doing. So if you take away one thing from this webinar, I hope it's this live it daily this i think is extremely important you want to make sure that you are living the church here on a daily basis make it something that your students see when they come in every week um, make it interactive make it fun um, you can incorporate the church year in again into your weekly classes to help reinforce it and there's a ton of different ways and i'm going to go through a a few of those right now sorry and what's great about these ones that i'm gonna um, talk about coming up is that you can do all of these as well as doing those mini lessons or as well as doing those traditional ones but these here that i'm going to talk about um just now they're living it daily it's something that the students can see on a daily basis when they come into your classroom that's going to remind them about that oops i went backwards sorry about that all right so colors of the church here we all know that we have the colors of the church here, white, red, green, blue, purple, violet, black. Um, and what's great about colors of the church here is that they're super easy to um, show in your classroom so that the students can kind of get um, this little dose of the church here when they come in. Um, so something that you could do is have a space where the colors are visible in your classroom. This could look like an altar or like a Jesus area. Um, it could be, you know, if you have a little altar, it could be that you have a Bible on there. Um, you know, have some devotions, a nice place where kids can come and pray um, at sometimes. But somewhere in that, you know, have maybe um, a pyramid that has, you know, the colors of the church here. And then they're changed out um, during each season or time of the year um let's see so you could even do some kind of pyramid or cloth around your whiteboard um it could just be you know like a ribbon that kind of just goes around there again um just with the church year colors changing them out as they go same thing with a cloth or a ribbon around a door frame again it's something that the kids can see every day and kind of keeps um that for my, in in the front of their mind for them could be a poster that you put up that could even just be literally a piece of paper with a with that certain color on there um it could be a piece of paper with a certain color that says advent or you know christmas or whatever it may be um but again make sure that you're changing these out at the beginning of each season um definitely encourage you to have the students help you with that so that while they are helping you with that you can kind of explain to them again you know what season you're in um what part of the church you're and again, just kind of keep that front of mind. Um, and then of course, incorporate those mini lessons, especially if you're changing those out with your students. Um, it's a great way, again, to just kind of, colors I think are wonderful because they can be so vibrant. Um, they really are appealing to our eye and they just get people's attention. So I think, um, you know, displaying the colors of the church here in your classroom is an easy way and a fun way to incorporate the church here into kind of that every day. So next, let's talk about devotion series. Um, I highly uh, recommend doing this as a weekly thing. Um, it's a great way to just start your class with your students, uh, do a devotion that goes along with the church season or um, uh, time of the year that you're in. There are a ton of Advent and Lenten devotionals. Um, we have some here. We have Counting to Christmas. That is, let's see if I can get that. 
that's this one right here, this Counting to Christmas. Um, and then that's the Devotions and a Calendar, which I think is wonderful to have both of those. Um, and then we also do have this Waiting in Wonder for Easter. And again, there's a lot of devotions also that go along with the entire church here as well. Um, and again, this could be done weekly or at the beginning of each season, you know, however you want to do it. What's great about all of these ideas is they are adaptable to you. Um, we know that your class and your students and your teachers and your church and your everything, it's all unique. It's unique to um the people that you have to your congregation to your students to everyone um so what's great is that these are all adaptable and you can take and pick and choose what's going to work best for you and your school so i love that love making things adaptable uh next let's talk about music again like i said before um music i think is extremely important um it's something you know that we hear on a daily basis, um, especially our younger kids. They're always listening to music. Um, so why not? Let's let's teach them music that's good. Let's teach them music about Jesus and about God and about the church here. Um, so you could ring us uh, uh, sing a song or play a song relating to each season. You could sing the same song each week during the season, which I actually kind of recommend. That's going to help them. It's going to help it stick in their minds. It's going to be something that they remember. They're going to take it home and sing it to their parents and probably drive them crazy, but that's a good thing. That's what we want to happen. Um, so a couple of different resources here. We have the Lutheran Service Book, um, and I'm pretty sure you're going to be familiar with that. And hymns 331 through 522 are arranged actually in order of the church year. So that's extremely helpful for you. Lots of different songs. Um, but then we have this next one here, which is Songs of the Church Year Songbook. Um, this is wonderful because it is um, specifically for children and it specifically goes along with the church year. So I highly recommend you taking a look at that. Um, again, I do have a link to this on the um, resource page that I gave to you. And if you didn't, don't have that, I will email out to you as well. So again, music, this could be something that you incorporate into your mini lesson. I highly recommend doing it every week. You know, maybe it's how you begin your class. Again, lots of easy ways to incorporate music into your class, but um, this really helps things stick. Music is such a wonderful way uh, to praise God and uh, to learn more about them as well. Next, let's talk about some art projects. What kids don't like art projects? I know I still like art projects. So, um, but what are some different art projects that you can do? Well, just a few that I thought of. Um, you can make flowers that coincide with the different seasons. So uh, poinsettias for Christmas, lilies for Easter. Here you can see, you know, it's just a little example of making just a simple poinsettia. Um, and then what's wonderful around th uh, about this idea is that, hey, well, now I can't get it to work. There we go. Sorry about that. Um, is that you could keep these um, in your classroom as a reminder. Again, it kind of goes along with that um, bringing something as your everyday, bringing it into your everyday, making it visible. Um, plus, it's pretty. It's an, it's an easy way to decorate. So who doesn't love that? Um, but it also might be something that maybe your church wants to actually bring into, um, you know, their um, into your church and actually, you know, have out on display or wherever it may be. Um, something else you could do is create banners. Um, these would be great to decorate into your chapel. Again, you could have these in your classroom. So many different ways. There are a ton of different art projects. Um, I highly recommend doing just a quick little Google search or Pinterest. Everyone loves Pinterest these days. Um, and just some great ideas. Again, these are something that you could do as the seasons change out, just to kind of give a little reminder, do your mini lesson, sing a song, and, um, or maybe it's something that, you know, you're just uh, have a little extra time at the end of class, make a little art project. And, you know, especially if it is like around Christmas time, make a point center. And, you know, then you have that opportunity to talk about um, the time of the church year. So art projects. Next I have 
countdown calendars or count, I'm sorry, countdowns or calendars. Uh, these are really popular. You see them all over. I know Aldi, I think recently had a big sale on all of their advent calendars. So there's so many different ways to do this, um, but you can do advent calendars or countdowns, you know, kind of similar to this one right here. Um, Again, these can be found um, so many different places. Um, but, but what's great about this is um, it gives the kids something to look forward to. Um, now I know that these are gonna be a day-to-day -day thing, but it could be something um, that you know once a week, you just go through and do all of them and then you can sit there and talk about them. Um, we also do have the Lent calendars and countdowns, similar as this one. Um, this one is actually new from us uh, for 2020. Our theme is Eyes on Jesus. And I love that we have this new, um, it's like a family and children's calendar. So it kind of gives you ideas on um, what to do each day. So this is, I mean, this is great for families. This is meant for families, but it could be something that you absolutely incorporate into your classroom as well. And then of course, the church here calendar definitely have that within your classroom. Show it, display it. I think it's important. Um, I, I personally envision um, one where it's almost like a clock so you can actually kind of move it as uh, the days go by and the seasons change. Um, that way your kids again get that visual and, um, and something that they can see on a weekly basis. And what about a journal? Journaling, this is really great. Um, for the youth or the young adults. So the kids that are gonna be a little bit older um, that you want to uh, have to, that you want to think a little more critically about things. I think doing a little journal time um, at the beginning of each season or time is a great way to help them learn about the church year. You could have prompts or questions that relate to the time of the church year um, that the students can sit there and journal on. It doesn't have to be anything long, five or 10 minutes. Um, but what's great about that too is that they can look back on their journal and see what they said. And then maybe they've learned things throughout the year and they can go back and say, hey, now I have this answer or now I know what this means. Or it can just be a way for them to go back and look at what they um, were thinking about at the time. Um, like I said, it's a great way for them to think critically about each season. Um, it's just, I think journaling is a fun way no matter what in your Sunday school, especially for your um, older kids and older children that you have. Um, but I think it's a, I think it's a, a underlooked way to help critically let the students critically think about the church year and what it means to them and what the importance is in their life. Um, so, that's kind of the big um, ideas that I have for you today. Hopefully some of them are helpful, but let's kind of just give an overview. Again, what I love about all of these is that you can make them your own. Um, and there's so many different ways to do it, so many different things. Uh, again, you could do a traditional class, um, which is where you do either one full class on the entire church year, or you can kind of break that up into uh, three different sections. Mini lessons, which I think are my personal favorite, where at the beginning of each season or time of the year, you present a little mini lesson at the beginning of your Sunday school and discuss, you know, what's going on in that time of the year. Incorporate videos. Again, I absolutely love those videos uh, that we put together. I think they're super easy for you as teachers and administrators um, to, you know, find and to show to your students. Um, colors, again, colors are really important as, um, you know, they kind of give something for the students to look for every day. Devotions, devotions are wonderful no matter what, uh, but relating them to the season of the church year is really easy and um, a fun way to get the kids involved. Music, again, love singing. Um, it's a great way to praise God and uh, really can help the students um, kind of put everything together. Art projects, super fun, especially for the younger students. Um, a countdown or a calendar and then journaling for some of those older students. So a few different resources that I have for you today. Um, again, I have all this information on that PDF that should be part of your handouts. Um, and again, if you don't see it though, don't worry, I will go ahead and email that out um, with a link to this full recording as well so that you have that. Um, but the first one here is ordering our days in his piece. Um, 
And this presents the life and work of Jesus and the church throughout the times of the church year. Um, so the church year not only orders our days, but also teaches us the fundamental narratives of salvation story through simple language, striking artwork, biblical and liturgical text, ordering our days in the church year, the time of Christmas, or yeah, the time of Christmas, the time of Easter, and the time of the church. Each part of the church year has something new to offer and a new piece of the story to tell. So that's just a great resource um, for you to look at on um, different things about the church year. This one I highly, highly recommend looking at, taking a look at is this church year worship kit. This is fantastic for teaching. It truly, truly is. Um, so, and I'll just kind of give you a brief overview of it so you can see. The visuals and ideas in the church year worship kit are designed to help you teach young children about the church year. Inside the kit, you will find a leader guide, four large posters with church year teaching resources and prayers, and a CD with song recordings, melody line scores, and additional resources and patterns. Again, so many different things for you there that's going to be truly helpful. Um, the leader guide includes a short opening worship activity with suggestions for celebrating special occasions and teacher talk to help teach about the key days and seasons of the church year. And what's great about that is you can incorporate that into the mini lessons you can incorporate that into you know a traditional lesson so many different ways but what a fantastic resource right there that church year worship kit um, a couple other things that we have this growing or this children's bulletins which is the growing in worship um, what i love about this is they do go along with that um with the church here as well and they do change colors along with the seasons so again this is something tangible that the students can have um that is just a great way to kind of keep that church year going throughout the entire year and then something this is obviously not the correct cover here but something that we have in the works currently it is planning on coming out i believe in quarter three of next year so quarter three of 2020 is um, we have this entire simple explanation series which are these tiny little um booklets um they're little handouts basically you know about this tall um with quick easy references on some topics that are really important um, they are great for entire churches to have um, i love them just as kind of quick reference and we are coming out with a church year one in 2020 along with the many other ones but i'm really excited for that one so kind of be on the lookout for that i think it's going to be something that's really helpful um, in giving an overview of the church year, not only for our students, but for our entire congregation. So something to think about. Um, but with that, um, I kind of want to, I want to, well, first of all, I want to um, invite you to, sorry, uh, connect on Facebook with us. Um, we actually have a Sunday school teachers group. Um, so if you are a Sunday school teacher or administrator or um, volunteer or whatever you may be, I highly recommend you joining this group. Um, we post a lot of information on there. People post questions on there as well. Um, that, And it's just a great resource to have kind of um, that soundboard that you can bounce ideas off of ask questions for with other teachers and guess what it's throughout the whole country so i think that's pretty awesome um but if you do a quick search on facebook for sunday school teachers and as long as you see this little um kind of logo thing there you found the right one so i highly recommend you doing that um then if you also have any questions that you think of later on please don't hesitate to shoot me over an email i am always here to help um it's something that I absolutely love about my job is being able to help people like you who are, you know, helping our students on a daily basis. Um, and it's very, it just, I enjoy it. So any question that you have at any time, please email me. I am happy to help. Um, I want to go ahead though. And before I take questions, I want to end it in prayer just in case anyone wants to go. Um, so if you all would please join me, I'd really appreciate it. Jesus, thank you so much for bringing everyone here today to learn more about you um, so that we can better teach you, teach about you to our students. Thank you so much for um, giving us the strength to teach the students about you. Um, thank you so much for giving your life for us. Thank you so much just 
honestly for everything. Um, thank you for bringing me here today personally so that I can help um, help teachers and administrators maybe think of some new ideas on um, ways that they can engage their students to learn more about you and to learn about the cheer cheer. So with all that um, in your name, we pray. Thank you, Jesus. All right, so I'm going to open it up and see if there are any questions. Um, and again, if for some reason I don't get to your question or um, I didn't see your question or whatever it may be, don't worry, I will get all the questions. They email them to me and I will get back to you, I promise. So let's see what we got going on here. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can get it working. That's always a thing. Mm -mm -mm. Oh gosh, there we go. Let's see. So um, Carol asked you mentioning you mentioned the children coloring the church here. Is there a coloring page that allows them to do that? Um, I personally am not sure if CPH has a page that is specifically just for children's coloring. Um, I know that you can um, do a quick Google search and you will come up with basically white. Um, church year calendars that the student that you could actually print off and the students would be able to color. Um, I will have to look and see if there is actually like a um, worksheet or something like that that CPH has um, for, you know, like a coloring worksheet. So great question, but thank you for asking. So uh, I'll well, Daryl just had some really nice things to say. So thank you, Daryl. I appreciate that. I didn't, I didn't, I don't think I saw a question there, but I really do appreciate that. It's always nice to have some positive feedback. So I, I appreciate you coming today. How about that? Um, let's see. Well, I don't, again, I don't see any other questions, but um, if you're typing it in right now and I'm not seeing it, that's fine. Oh, here we go. Oh, sure. Facebook group. Absolutely. Um, so the Facebook group, it's super easy. Um, I would give you the URL, but it's like crazy long. So <laughs> I'm not going to do that because it would take forever for you to write it down. But if you go onto Facebook and then when you type um, in the little search bar, all you would have to type is um, Sunday School Teachers. Um, and then you might need to like tab over to groups, but it may just pop up right away. As long as you kind of see this little logo here, the blue with the yellow and the Sunday school teachers, the little church, you should be, um, that's our group. Um, and so again, I highly recommend you joining that if you can. Um, let me see if I can pull it up here for you. I'm not sure if this is going to show. Yeah, I don't think it's going to work. Sorry about that. Um, but anyway, if you have a, if you can't find it, let me know. I'm happy to email you that information as well. So, all right. Well, I think that's all the questions. Again, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope you got a little bit out of this. Um, maybe has some new ideas and some tips um, on teaching the church here to your students uh, because it is such an important um, part to our um, faith. So thank you so much for being here today. Have a great one in Jesus name.